Oh, I'm bored just by how much you talked about the <laughs> USC one because, I mean, let's be honest. Who are they playing? St. Mary's, a team that they beat 20 to 2. Uh, what Saint Denver Mary's. did that is a was fine judgment what Denver did was learning. way more impressive. I mean, first of all, you've got Trevor Baptiste, Connor Canizero, and Ethan Walker, three superstars scoring goals, and they were able to score two of them in the final four seconds. <laughs> um, it made me mad. Head like joke. honestly, Head this joke. made me mad. One of the best things about this team, one of the only good things about this team, was their defense last year and, and the way that they played. You got Tucker Durkin, you got Matt Landis, and then you trade away Matt Landis. Why? What are you going to do with a fourth know, pick that Matt Landis so couldn't already flag, do for you? Flag, flag on you. Good. I wanted they're, to get a the biggest news of the day in the NLL. Dane Smith is back. The MVP is what, back. What does that mean for this Buffalo offense and this team as a whole? For the Cannons fans, if you're at a game and you're watching and there's a young kid. <laughs> running around the field after with a helmet and a stick. It's his yeah, oldest son, Hobie. Guy. So how do you balance everything with playing in the NLL, also playing with the Black Wolves, playing with the Cannons? You have another job and you have two kids. How do you really find time for everything? Both the teams have taken the field. They're warming up and you can feel it. The pressure is on here in this MLL championship. It's a rematch game. So much is on the line. So let's talk about Denver first. It was interesting talking to some of their staff last night. I said, was this year less stressful getting to the championship? And they said no, because this year there's expectations, targets on our back and now they've made it so how much pressure is there for Denver to repeat Ohio State and Duke going head to head today with the first spot in the final four on the line here no score yet the senior Eric Fennell coming from behind the net to make it one nothing Ohio State the Buckeyes with the first lead in this one but Duke with an answer for that and it's number 14 Justin Gutterding now, of the four teams that practiced today, Maryland was the only team to have a light day. However, they will practice later today, Friday, at a local high school. As for their opponent, Denver, as well as Towson and Ohio State, those teams had pretty intense practices, but everyone looked dialed and focused top to bottom. Got to mention one of the coolest parts of the day, seeing Patriots legendary head coach Bill Belichick out here through all of the four practices, all of the rain, talking with each of the head coaches. What a great start to championship week. Weekend. Reporting live from Gillette Stadium, I'm Margo McCauley, Lack Sports Network. Tim Rotans, you are a national champion. How are you feeling? Coming in here, that monkey on your back, 42 years, no national championships. What does it mean when you look up there and see all the alums that have worked for this? As a national champion, what's it like to be back here at championship weekend in a different aspect being here for the draft? Our next presenter holds the MLL record for points in a season with 74, and that was set just last year. He is an all-star for the New York Lizards and a member of the U.S. national team. To present this year's Warrior Offensive Player of the Year Award, please welcome 2016 recipient Rob Pinnell. And she joins us now, Hannah Nielsen. First of all, congratulations from all of us here Congrats. at Black Sports Network. How crazy has the past 24 hours or week been for you now that you've been named the Michigan head coach? Now it's time to get to the top five, the, the ones stuff. you all want to see. And I got to say, Marcus Holman, no MVP, but a lot of features in these top five. Let's start with a goal from him at number five. A look at the flick of the wrist. Take a look at this finish from Marcus Holman. Oh, my goodness. One of his five first half goals. Okay, so I've been keeping track. You've talked about Northwestern, Florida, Syracuse, USC, <laughs> UNC, Maryland, and Stony Brook now. One team. That you haven't mentioned is Boston College, the team that made it all the way to the championship last year. Does this team have the depth in their midfield to have one of the top units in the country? In this first game, they were actually opponents. Nancy Coke playing for Iroquois Nationals, taking some faceoffs too. And before there, that was Lyle Thompson, Miles there as well in the dome as they face their alma mater, the Great Danes playmaker Connor Fields, getting the offense going early. Fields to Jacob Patterson. That's a nasty low to high rip. One nothing. Albany, the first team on the board. Ball's now on the other end. Josh Jordan, fake spin bouncer. Count it. Jordan, a junior this year. Always tough to get through a show with these two, but somehow we always seem to do we it. We did it. We Thank you, Mama fun. Bear. Of course, we guys. Hope it. you had fun with us. Happy midfielder week. Don't forget, we start to unveil the top 25 tomorrow, Tuesday. Be sure to tune in. Margo, Emerson, Josh. See you guys later. Peace.